Hey guys, in this video what I want to talk about is things, habits that you're probably doing that are stressing your thyroid and making your hypothyroidism worse. Just like I was, as I do more of these thyroid videos, I have more and more people coming to me explaining their problems and a lot of them fall under these habits. So I think if you address them, you will begin to feel better just like I did. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. So this is in no particular order, but you have to understand that when you do these things, it can kick off a cascade. And I'll talk more about that as I go along, but this isn't necessarily in order, but these are the things I see. So number one is extreme diets. I was famous for this. I did low carb, extremely low carb. I did this for over a decade. I did daily fasting. Um, so I wasn't getting, I, I was very scared of carbs for a long time. And at some point it caught up to me. I started feeling worse, developed Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I didn't sleep well. Um, so you have to understand for your thyroid to function optimally, it requires glucose. Now your body is going to get it one way or the other. It can get it from carbs. It can produce more energy when it gets it from carbs, or it will kick in a stress response to synthesize and get that glucose from other things besides carbs. That, but that's not what you want when you have thyroid issues. You want the glucose from carbs. It helps you convert T4 to T3, particularly in your liver. And the glucose will also help with your overall liver health. Second thing I see, and I kind of touched on this earlier, again, these are all kind of related. It's all part of a cascade, but fasting and chronic under eating. Um, I'm just shy of 6'2", uh, and I was eating for many years with the fasting, like 1800 calories a day, which is not enough calories. Um, you know, I was thin, that was great, but I felt like crap. And part of that is when you do these things, again, we're kicking in that stress response. Um, when you're not eating, it's like, think of your adrenal glands. You have your thyroid, your adrenal glands. Um, when you're stressed, the adrenal glands kick in to kick out cortisol and adrenaline, the stress hormones, and it's, it's an inefficient way to, again, get that glucose going. Uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of people that get insulin resistance eating low carb and fasting. I was one of them. It slows down your metabolism. Um, your inability to process carbs if you try to reintroduce carbs just like i did just like a lot of people that come to me they're like i eat carbs now after doing keto and low carb and my sugars shoot way up that's because your insulin resistance from doing the low carb stuff it's it's a lot to wrap your head around because it goes against the popular theme but if you look at the biochemistry in your body this is how your body operates and it also contributes to leaky gut um, so these are the, the fasting. If you have thyroid problems, I did a video on this. You, I would encourage you not to fast. That doesn't mean fasting is bad. You just have to be metabolically healthy to pull it off. Most people with thyroid, that's not the case. Another thing too much or extreme exercise. Exercise is a great thing. I work out, you know, I do exercise, but you have to balance that. You have to be able to read your body. If you're doing, I'm picking on CrossFit here because it is a very stressful, um, very, very cortisol inducing, but it could be marathon. It could be a lot of these extreme exercises. You're probably going to have to back off that till you get back to a, a baseline of health. Uh, so those sorts of things are not contributing and helping your thyroid. Next, we have lack of quality or lack of quantity of sleep. This is kind of a chicken or an egg because if you're doing some of these things up here, you're eventually going to find your sleep sucks. That's what happened to me. Um, or if your sleep isn't good right now for other reasons, it's going to kick in a stress response. So some things you can do. I did a video on mouth taping. I found that to be helpful. Uh, you want to minimize blue light before bed. Uh, doing some red light on your thyroid can be helpful. I have a red light now. You want to keep a cool room and you want to keep the room dark, black. You know, you don't want any light coming in. Um, overall stress levels. I mean, let's face it, a lot of people have family, uh, kids, responsibilities. Um, 
it's easy for me to say, hey, you have to decrease some of those things. But if you know that they're contributing to poor thyroid function, those are things that you're going to have to address in one way, shape, or form. It may mean a job change. Um, some of those things that you're going to have to, to really get serious about. This is a big one. Lack of nutrient-rich foods. When you are eliminating one macronutrient, carbohydrates, like a lot of people try and do, you're eliminating nutrients that support your thyroid function. So some of the nutrient-rich foods I really like is liver. I know, I get it, liver's terrible. I'll talk more in another video about how I tackle it now. Uh, eggs are a great one. Oysters, not something that's readily available where I'm at, but it's great food. Uh, fruits, uh, honey, root vegetables, uh, the potatoes, the carrots, those sorts of things are great, okay? Finally, way too many seed oils in your diet. If there's one thing that you can do starting today that will immediately improve your health, it's to eliminate seed oils. There's really nothing good about them from the research I've seen. So your seed oils are essentially the sunflower oil, the um, all the oils that are in processed foods, essentially. There's, there's a lot of them, but the corn oils, the the seed oils, any of those. Basically, if you're looking to cook in something, you want to cook in butter, ghee, uh, coconut oil. Those are good fats, okay? Anything outside of those, I'd pretty much stay away from. They're notorious for hurting your thyroid. They're notorious for slowing your metabolism. So um, let me know in the comments, are you doing any of these things? Have you stopped them? Did they help? Uh, let me know what you're struggling with, with thyroid issues. Uh, it's helpful for me to hear your story. It's helpful for other people that are watching the video. So speaking of helpful, I hope this was, and I will see you in the next one, guys. Thank you.